Hey guys, welcome to another video. We're going to do an overview on Photoshop today. And if you don't have Photoshop, what you have to do is you're going to go to adobe.com and you're going to get the Adobe Creative Cloud. And I'm already running the Adobe Creative Cloud. This is what it looks like. You are able to access, uh, access software through here to, uh, to get Photoshop and other programs that they might have. And they also have, um, let's see, like try by. Yeah, I just updated Photoshop, and so I figured it was a good time to go through and actually kind of run through Photoshop a little bit because I might break some things <laughs> uh, because I just updated, and I'm sure it'll change some settings on me. Um, but you can launch Photoshop through here. You can install updates for different ones in here, and that's why I'm uh, doing this today because I think... I might have opened up a can of worms here. So we're going to open Photoshop. we will launch it. You have to have the license. You um, and you uh, really need Adobe Creative Cloud running to access Photoshop, or at the very least, uh, internet access. Companies are moving toward monthly subscriptions these days, and so you got to stay hooked up. So this is your home screen. Um, you can actually get rid of this. I kind of like it when it opens up to empty Photoshop, but uh, these days I've been kind of getting used to this and it allows me to jump back in uh, recent projects. And so you see here I've been working on some 3D stuff, some texture stuff, um, but we're going to go over here on the left, create new I don't know why that's at such a strange value. Interesting. 72. Let's name the document. Um, Photoshop. Crash. Crash course. Point two. Underscore two. Don't color manage. I like that. <laughs> and then let's say, actually, I'm gonna go a little bit larger. Let's do 2048. And don't worry if your interface looks a little different than mine. In fact, let's just go ahead and tear some things down, huh? So I could pull out all these panels because you know, let's talk about how to get into Photoshop and what this is going to look like to you guys. This might be where you're at, something like this. You might have some other panels in here, but I'm, I'm just stripping it down to what you are likely to have. Okay, and so first and foremost, this is the canvas. If we hit B on our keyboard, we can paint. Oh, X will also flip your color. So right click while you're in the brush to go grab a brush. And then this is how you paint, right? You're just painting on the canvas. Now, to pan, you gotta hold spacebar. If it's locked, you hit F to full screen, and it'll actually slide around now. Sometimes the uh, the canvas may be locked. Uh, I like to be in this sort of full screen mode so that I can wiggle my canvas around and kind of get in on corners like this. Um, control zero will frame your canvas. Control Alt Zero will show the canvas at its max resolution. So that wasn't much of a difference. But if, say if I changed the camera, uh, or not camera, sorry, if I change the canvas size, uh, Control Alt C, we'll go over this here in a minute. But I'm gonna make my, let's go back down to 1024, proceed. 
and it just cropped in on it. But Control Alt Zero is actual size pixels, so that's actual 1024 by 1024. Uh, I'm on a fairly high resolution monitor. This is a 3840 by 2160. And so a 1024 looks kind of small, but if I hit Control Zero, it'll frame my canvas to my face <laughs> or to the full Photoshop interface. So Control Zero back down. I'm a Control Z to undo. Hope you're writing these hotkeys down. Control Shift Z to redo. So Control Z, Control Shift Z. And let's just, uh, you know, go over the basics. File, we got new, control N for new, open, we got save, save as, export. Uh, these are specialty things. Uh, I'm not gonna go over too much of this. I'm gonna go over more common tools. Um, scripts, if you go find Photoshop scripts, this is where they'll load in. Automate. I use every once in a while uh, batch and create create droplet. These are fun actually because to create a batch, it's basically a little uh, script. You don't need to know scripting, but it walks you through how to make uh, how to use an action. We'll go over actions later to run a command on like a folder, for example. So if you have a folder of a hundred photos and you need to change the size of 100 photos, this would be a great way to do it, is to batch a folder and tell Photoshop to open up each one of those folders and it'll just go and it'll, it'll load up every photo one by one and change the, change the size for you. Create Droplet is basically like batch, but Create Droplet will create a file for you on your desktop that at any time, if you want to change the size of the file, all you got to do is drag a photo onto that little file, onto their droplet as they call it, and it'll run that command. So, some fun stuff there. Edit, of course, undo, redo, fill, shift F5. It's just like a generic, this is like a paint bucket. You go fill, boom, and it just filled it with my foreground color. The other way to do that, if I hit X to flip my color and go back to white, is to hit Alt Backspace on your keyboard. And I never go to the Edit Fill, <laughs> um, but I almost always Alt Backspace to fill. And so I'm just hitting X and fill, X and fill, so Alt Backspace, boom, boom, boom. And I do that a lot. Um, the, uh, the Fill command, Alt Backspace, respects selections so if I make a selection and then alt backspace into that it'll fill that selection so that's handy uh, image let's see here I'm gonna show all menu items this is where you change your color space if you're working for print go to CMYK I'm not gonna do that though it's worth noting there is a preview for Photoshop um, if we go pick some colors here, make it, make it red, okay. Um, control Y on your keyboard, and I don't know if you guys can see this. Maybe if I full screen into this, and then I'm hitting Control Y on my keyboard, it fades a bit. And what you need to understand is that uh, Control Y is a very straight I mean I guess this is used a lot for some people in the print world so uh, they hit control Y and they're checking their CMYK values that it looks good for print uh, is personally a little uh, way too close <laughs> to the control T command which is to transform so uh, let's talk about transformations and movement in here since we're on the subject of that too V is your move tool uh, I don't have a free layer, background's locked. You can double click uh, to name the layer and convert it from a background and now I can move that with the V, move tool, V. Uh, but transforming being too close to the CMYK checker, um, I very often will make a selection and control T to grab that selection and you can see how, you know, you would imagine this is something that gets used a lot. 
Okay. But it's just a little too close to that CMY checker. So be careful that you're not hitting that CMYK and then making color decisions based off of this screen. Uh, I work in the digital world, so um, I've trapped myself into some horrible values. Uh, control Y tends to desaturate your colors, so uh, just be aware. Auto tone, auto contrast, auto color, image size, canvas size. So under the image, this is where we would change. Image size is uh, how you would change your image size, but this one stretches it. So if you're going above your original document size, if we go 49.6, it took my image and it stretched the whole thing and when you do that you see how things get a little bit blurry because it's having the computers having to add information in control Z a little bit crisper uh, control alt I to go back to that image size if we go down 1024 control zero actual size pixels that's how you change your image size um, the other one you saw me do earlier, which is also under image, is canvas size, control alt c and this one will allow you to crop an image. Sometimes it's nice to be able to kind of just change one axis and not have it squash the image, but to just straight up crop it. So if we set this to 1024, and you see I changed my the direction in which I want it to crop the canvas. It's kind of a nice thing. You can do it by the corner, depending on you know the image and how you want to set up. Uh, it's telling me that it's going to crop, and I know this. I'm going to say go. And that was strange to me that it didn't seem to respect. Oh, I changed the width. That's why I thought I was changing. Boom. There we go. So that crops the the image. Layers, let's get into layers. I'm sure you want to know. New layer, control, uh, that's not the default hotkey. <laughs> that's my hotkey. But you can set up, uh, I don't know what the default was. I want to say it was control shift in or something like that. Um, layer, new, but if, you know, it'll be here hovering for you, so. New layer, we can name the layer. It gives us the option to type in the name whenever we go to this command. And so we would say, you know, generally, as all the cool kids do, we just leave it at the uh, the default. And we like to name things layer, <laughs> layer one. See, layer zero, layer one, this is how professionals do it. JK. Duplicate layer if you want to duplicate. Another way to do that is to hold Alt on your keyboard and go over to this layer panel. And uh, while you're holding Alt, you can just drag one of those layers and it'll it'll duplicate for you. Uh, adjustment layers are fancy. They're like non-destructive layers. So if I were to place like a brightness contrast in here say okay I can at any time and it brought up my little properties window let's go ahead and dock that uh, I'm gonna put it down here at the bottom like that properties and so brightness contrast yep I don't know why that just looks there it goes. Use legacy. It tends to work better. Brightness contrast. And uh, anytime we go, we leave that adjustment layer, which adjustment layers can be found here also. Same for new layer. New layer here. Adjustment layer here. But now I can get back to those properties for the adjustment layer at any time I want. So I just double click on that and it's gonna give me access to that. So this is something like a non-destructive way of editing a photo or say you can uh, 
make an edit to an adjustment layer and then paint some of it away with a mask. And so we'll get into masks in a bit, but there's an idea for you. Image rotation, if you want to turn your whole image, um, you could do it with the transform tool like I showed you, where you select all the pixels like this. Uh, whoops, control A. This only works on a layer though. You could turn a layer. Control A, Control T, select all, transform. Or uh, you just rotate the whole, what was that? Uh, 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 image rotation, there we go. Clockwise, it rotates the whole canvas. Masking is in here, so you can add layer masks. Um, there are also fill layers. These are, these are super handy for non-destructive. So if you want to just put a solid color and fill like a, almost like a paint bucket and fill the whole world, you do solid color. And you name it, professional names. And we give it a color, say okay. And then now we have this non-destructive color layer in here that we can go and double click and change it any time. Let's see. Smart objects, uh, probably won't talk about too much in here. But, um, yeah, let's, let's just skip over that for the moment. Uh, group layers, grouping's handy. Select layers over here and control G to group something. And then you can turn things off as group, real handy. With, when you have all these professional names in here like this, you can group them all together in another group professional name like this and then collapse them so that you know what they are and you can come back to them. Let's see, layer, what else we got in here? Uh, you can ungroup. I honestly didn't even know there was an ungroup command. You can ungroup. Uh, JJ's always just taking these and dragging them out and then hitting backspace on the group to delete that layer. And that's another way to delete things, uh, or to, to delete layers, just so long as you don't have a selection out here. If you have a selection, control D to deselect, and then you hit backspace and it deletes that layer. You gotta be a little careful. You go in and delete all these things. Another way to do it is to grab a layer and just pull it and then drop it on a little trash can down here. Another way to duplicate is to drag and drop it on a new layer button down here and that's another way to duplicate. Lots of ways to do things inside of Photoshop. Arrange. Uh, if you're uh, working with layers, this is a good way to push layers around, arranging use hotkeys for that which are control and bra bracket basically merge visible this is a good way to collapse merge and merge visible uh, merge visible let's undo some things boom, 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 boom. bring all of our layers back good thing I hid some of this stuff I have this empty layer and then I have our what we have here let's draw something on this empty layer go and then now I have these two layers and if I if I have this layer one selected and I control E it'll merge down let's duplicate this control E will take a layer and merge it down into the one below it control shift E will merge everything that's unhidden into one image like that Uh, flatten image will flatten everything even if it is hidden. So that's a good way to just rasterize uh, all of your layers in a way. You say flatten image and my group over here will go away. Collapses everything. Back into a background layer. Single layer file. Let's see. Lock layers, you can lock things in here. I tend to just do that through the layer panel now. 
you have a move, see this little uh, arrow, multi arrow? It's your lock position. Let's go way to lock a layer. You can also lock painting on a layer, so if you don't want to actually paint, if you're, uh, you're usually in the brush, it'll keep you from painting on it. And so, or you can just kind of hit this lock icon at the end and it'll lock everything. It won't allow you to move the layer or paint on the layer. Type, uh, a bunch of really just for typography stuff. I'm not gonna get into that too much, but your text tool is on T. Boom, I guess I'm, my layer, this is underneath. Let's put it on the top. Yep, 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 yep. This probably be a good time to go to our window and bring up maybe character. I'm gonna dock the character panel. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got a, we're gonna go get paragraph, paragraph in here with it. Whoops. Do that again. Paragraph. Put that in here. So I can highlight that text. Or Control A, select all. And adjust some of these. That's a squash. You can adjust the kerning here. adjust the point size and when you're in a tool you'll also get common settings up top so we got all of our fonts uh, if your fonts have italic settings so if, maybe if we go to Arial yeah we got italic and bold bold italic some of those are in here point settings uh, smoothness, centered, left aligned, right aligned, uh, justified would be under paragraph. We get other other things in here. Uh, if you want to justify, uh, the reason they're grayed out is because we didn't d define a box for it to be justified. So text, and you can drag a box with the text tool, and that would put a bunch of text in here. And now our all these settings pop up and we can justify ragged ragged right ragged left justified center okay I'm kind of not a fan of how they autofill lorem ipsum text in here now a little bit frustrating mm hmm so type uh, ways to select so say I want to select some things. I put a select here. Let's fill this with black. And then we we'll go to the select menu. One of the things I tend to use in here every once in a while, there's a deselect in here. Select all, deselect, control D, that's default. Uh, deselect layers. Uh, I use modify a lot, so sometimes I like to adjust a little uh, like circle selections like this and maybe I want to do a let's do an expand by 30 pixels there we go that's how you expand a selection maybe we fill that with something else like white if I go f uh, select modify and then do a contract do this by 25 pixels and then fill that with something else. While we have this little kind of stroke thing happening, maybe this would be a good time to talk about what's under edit. If you ever need to put a quick stroke around a selection, say so stroke. I'm going to put a 10 pixel stroke around my selection, change it to red, say OK. Control D to deselect. Filters can be fun. Um, a common one in here would be like blur. People typically do a Gaussian blur. And then when you do that, you get this little 
radius that you can turn up. And we'll preview window as well. Oh, this thing is almost never helpful. <laughs> Set that blur amount, hit OK. It's a common one. Let's see, noise. We add noise to something. I do this every once in a while. Different kind of noise algorithm. Color, monochromatic. Mm, here's an effect in here that I like a lot. You could do render clouds. This is kind of like a noise map. Uh, zoom out here. Oh yeah, pan. Zoom is, uh, I think you do, oh yeah, wait, wait, control plus, control minus, I forgot to say that earlier, where you zoom in and out, or you use control and space bar to get in and out like that. Gives you a slide, like a slide zoom. Um, it made that noise map or that clouds map with my colors here, so I'm going to hit D to go back to my default black and white colors. I'm going to go filter and I'm going to run another clouds. Well, filter, render, clouds. Oh, it's on the bottom layer. Pay attention to which layer you're on. There we go. Um, you can do a fractal clouds. They call it a difference clouds. And then after you run a command like this, it gives you the option up here to run your last layer filter. So you can again hit difference clouds, control F, control F, control F, and this difference clouds will keep kind of iterating on itself and get a, um, you know, a bit more complicated. You see it's starting to get kind of smoky looking. Uh, there's all sorts of effects in here. Pixelate, uh, color halftone. Let's do it. Let's run the defaults. Ooh, look at that. Comic books. <laughs> uh, sharpen's a good one. Let's, uh, let's control Z out of that craziness. Filter, sharpen. Uh, there we go. And it did, it did do a sharpen, but it was real subtle. And so if we run, again, control F, Control F, Control F, Control F, whoops, full screen, <laughs> Control F, Control F, Control F, that's super sharp now, right? Man, that's crispy. Filter, let's do a blur on that. Let's see what happens if we do a smart blur. A smart blur tries to respect edges, so it's good for like... I don't know, if I were to compare it to like an Instagram filter, all the women like, where they're uh, blurring out their face, but they try to do it in such a way that you can't tell, where it just blurs out the face and it's not blurring out like where your cheeks are or anything like that. It's kind of what smart blur is. <laughs> Which does not work on here. Let's do it on this. Filter, smart blur. Oh, I just ran it on. Ooh, blur, smart blur. Let's zoom in on this little preview here. Yeah. So you change the radius, and you can see it's trying to respect where the edges are, and you can kind of change that edge threshold right here. threshold and then hit OK. So if I control Z, you see how it tried to kind of blur out some of the detail but respected some of my kind of edgy edging and like these little highlights and things. Smart blur. So there are all kinds of filters in here. Stylize, let's do uh, you know if we really want to go crazy here. We can oil paint this. Stylization. Ooh, Photoshop filters. Yeah. Now we're ready for Instagram. High pass filter I like to use. This is a 
it's almost like a, it's it's almost like a sharpen. Uh, it really it's really good at removing uh, or flattening an image and trying to hold on to the detail. So I use high pass for various effects. Let's see, those are probably a lot of the good ones. They just get weirder and weirder kind of abstract stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go over 3D in here. I do real 3D. <laughs> and uh, maybe we could bring back some of our windows that I got rid of earlier. Let's talk about that. So actions I like to use. Actions are like, it's like, uh, hmm, what would I compare that to? It's like coding in Photoshop without actual coding. It just you can start an action and it'll record what you do and then you save it into a button which is pretty fancy. That's how you, uh, that's how you create batch commands like I was talking about earlier. Adjustments. These are nice. These are all of our adjustment layers like brightness contrast. Uh, I'm actually going to put that here along with the properties because usually when you add brightness contrast it's going to kick you over to the properties. And so I like to have those kind of stacked like that. What else? Let's bring up our brush settings. Brush settings are nice. We'll go over those next after I kind of get all my UI set up the way I want it. Brush settings and then brushes. Let's see, character styles, color, oh yeah, we want color, look, our color picker's back. We'll dock that in here, make it a little bit larger. Gradients, I'm gonna group that, these are, uh, you know, preset or saved gradients, so I'm gonna group that with my color. Histogram, I don't really use that often, but it's here, history. Uh, if you like to see your undo stack, that's what that is. Info, layer comps. Navigator is like a like a little preview window of your whole document. Notes, paragraph, paragraph paths. Oh, paths is a good one. We're gonna we're gonna want that. Put paths up here. So if you work with uh, vector shapes a lot. You'll, you'll see your vector shapes in here. Good to have. Patterns. Ooh, yeah, patterns. Put that in there with uh, my other gradients. Kind of preset color type stuff. Shapes. Put that in here. Styles is a good one. And then my pre-made swatches. Put that here, along with my actions, because I like this to be in list mode, like that. I think that's all. Tool presets. Maybe once in a blue moon. I'll group that with my brushes. Okay. Collapse that. And so brushes. Slide that over. I've recorded this video a couple of times, so I don't know <laughs> if I actually went over how to load brushes uh, just now, but you can go to see where to go import brushes and you can load brushes download them off the internet I usually don't like my brush panel previewed like this so if I said brushes I'm gonna say, I'm gonna turn off brush stroke brush name oh, I guess you have to have one I'm gonna say brush tip and then turn off brush name this is how I recognize most of my brushes but if you if you like to see how they paint, you can do that brush stroke. I 
I'm gonna grab a basic brush here, just a basic kind of round brush. Create a new layer. Um, one of the things I just instantly had the impulse to do was to hold Alt. Oh look, we got that eyedropper too. When you're in brush mode and you hold Alt, you get the eyedropper and quickly pick colors. But also with holding Alt, you can right click and drag and it'll quick change your brush size. It's something I do a lot. Uh, up and down will be your opacity. Well, up and down is your hardness. Left and right is the diameter. And uh, it looks, actually, it's kind of, wow, they just changed this. Like literally two days ago, I was just showing how you could drag up and down and it would change the opacity. Fancy. Yeah, because it was a little bit frustrating. You go in here to change your brush size and then the opacity would jump down to like 98% like it just did. Or did, maybe I did previously. Turn that back up to 100. Another way to change your brush size is to use the bracket up. Left and right brackets and it'll kind of increment your brush size up. You can see it's over here and you also originally have your size settings on the top bar. Uh, if you drop down, change your size there. So I'm going to go into my brush settings here. Brush, brush settings. Uh, you can change all sorts of stuff in here. So I'll make a brush with you real quick. Kind of go over some of the settings. Um, let's see, spacing can be helpful because sometimes if you add too much into a brush you want to simplify the brush and make it just run all the effects a little less often or maybe you want kind of a stepping brush like that brush hardness if you want a softer brush make it really soft Interesting that they don't have opacity right here in this menu either. But opacity is on the top bar. If you type on your numpad too, it's a quick way to change your opacity. Or it looks like your flow is what it changes. Okay, either way, it's kind of. Take it down so I can type in 100. Whoops, 100, and change it back to 100%. Let's see, shape dynamics. If we go in here, you can change the size jitter. I'm gonna go back to a harder brush shape. Turn that back up to 100. And so that brush jitter in combination with the spacing can kind of get you this uh, interesting effect. Okay. Um, you can also set this to pin pressure and I actually just got this little icon. So this is uh, my pen pressure basically isn't on and that's a good little note if we jump over here to a, I'm on a Wacom tablet you can't do pressure sensitivity if you're on a mouse but um, if you're lacking pressure sensitivity inside of Photoshop what you can do is come over to your tablet settings I'm gonna go to calibrate and make sure that I'm using Windows Ink you hit check turn on Windows Ink I'm actually on another pen. I keep two pens next to my tablet because I like a pen without Windows Ink and I like a pen with Windows Ink. So I just switched my pen, which has Windows Ink on it, and now I have my pressure sensitivity in here. And that little icon went away. And so now I can size jitter based on, based on pressure 
change the minimum and maximum of that. Uh, if this was a different shape, which maybe we want to do, let's, let's create our own brush brush shape. I'm going to fill this. Let's create brush shape. Basic brush. And I'm going to create something like this. And I'm going to flip my colors so I can sharpen this and just kind of paint out. One of my favorite things about Photoshop is being able to create brushes like this. There we go. I like that shape. And what I'm going to do is uh, select it like this. And I made sure that I had nothing else on my canvas because when we make this brush, it's looking for black pixels. And then we're going to go to edit. I believe it's under edit. Define brush preset. And so when we run this, define brush preset, you see it found our brush, our brush shape. And I'm going to call this boomerang. Without a boomerang, boomerang. And now I have this, uh, this shape, which looks pretty gross right now, but for us to talk about some of these settings in here, we're going to need something a little better than a, than a circle brush. And I want to empower you here so you know how to create all your own brushes. You don't have to download them all for free. Brush settings, so shape dynamics, uh, size jitter. Change the minimum and maximum. Change the angle jitter. So now they start to go all sorts of different directions. Another thing that's cool about that angle jitter is uh, you can set it to rotation, I believe. Or maybe it's direction. I think it's direction. And then I'm gonna turn down this angle jitter. So zero angle jitter, but I changed the control to direction. And now the direction, oh, it's backwards. Let me fill this in here. It'll follow the direction that you're going. You go, oh no, well, how do I get it to turn around so it actually looks like an arrow? Well, we go back to brush tip shape. And let's actually turn this around to 180. This is the tip of the brush. There we go. Let's fill this document again. And I want this to be set to pressure sensitivity. So I have some size jitter, which looks cool. And I want the control, I want pen pressure. There we go. That's fun. Now it's starting to look like feathers or something. Okay. Uh, scattering can be helpful. I'll make this look really wild. You can add texture into this. So if you have grunge, or I don't know, grunge patterns load in here, we could maybe do something like that. And then we want to set, let's invert that. That's not it either. That's not, there it goes. Change the blending mode on that. Multiply, there we go. Now we have a pattern inside of this. Wow, I mean, we could really go over this all day. There's all, there's all sorts of cool stuff in here. Uh, transfer is kind of your opacity. Set that base to pen pressure. You can set it to do other things too, but it's kind of where your opacity is controlled out of. I don't want the opacity jitter. Brush pose, noise, wet edges. Wet edges is kind of a cool effect. Um, it makes it look like almost like a coffee stain, if you will. There we go. 
some of the brush settings. And so now I have this wicked brush. I'm gonna turn off wet edges. And I think I'm actually gonna turn off the scatter, turn the scatter down. I mean, you go way crazy on the scatter, turn the count up and everything, but I'm not gonna do that. Let's fill that. So there's my brush. And if I wanna save that, um, let's see, you don't do it through here. You should just be able to, oh, there it is, new. You used to be able to just click in here and it would add it. Um, but let's say new. And basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna include everything that we just did. You know, it's exactly how the brush is painting right now. It's gonna save it into a brush preset or a tool preset. So we say boomerang underscore electric and there's our new brush that we could drag around and kind of organize in here if we wanted to that's how you make brushes okay uh, a few other things I want to go over in here let's get away from this let's go talk about Woo, let's get a basic brush let's talk about masking Get, start getting into the thick of Photoshop here. Okay, so I'm gonna clear out some things in here. Okay, well, let me clear everything out. So we gotta go select most of the layers except that one. <laughs> oh, and the, and the group. And drag that out of here clean my document up a little bit. I'm going to alt duplicate that layer and I'm going to change it to something like yellow. Yep. And uh, we're going to explain, the way I'm going to explain layers to you guys is through kind of like materials. Uh, I'm a digital artist and I mean a 3D modeler. So I texture things a lot and I'm thinking about layering materials a lot. And this is one of my uh, main reasons for using masking, if not photo, you know, doing some kind of photo editing. But um, we're going to think of this like a fire hydrant. And so I'm going to call this group fire hydrant. And then we're going to call this paint one, or paint, um, let's make it red, but not 255 red. We're gonna be choice with our color here. And we're gonna do like a faded, rusted, kind of fire truck red. There we go. And then we got our yellow paint underneath it. So this fire hydrant's been painted a couple of times now. It's gotten rained on, gotten ugly, and then they, they came back and they painted it again. And then underneath that paint, you would have the metal, right? So we got the metal. So here's our layers all built up. We got metal, yellow paint, red paint. Now each time I'm creating, this is a solid fill, right? So it's solid color. Anytime I create an adjustment layer, it comes with this little white box out here, this mask. And you can see these, uh, the border around as I click these, the little white border around this. That means I'm selecting the mask, right? So I'm over here selecting this mask. You can view a mask by alt-clicking it, and it'll this will preview on your canvas. And so if I go in here and I paint on here, that's my preview mask. And if I alt-click it again, I get out of preview. And look, we're starting to remove the top layer of paint. I want to go back, and get a kind of a, a grunge here. Let's get a grunge brush, make this look convincing. Yeah, something like that. There we go. And I'm masking away. Now what you need to know about masks, how they work, it's black and white. So white is what you see, black is what you don't see. And so as I paint with white, I'm revealing paint 
And when I paint with black, I'm taking it away. Got to understand this is kind of the key concept of masking because we're about to go kind of deep on masking. I think masking is one of the greatest things about Photoshop and there's a lot of things you can do with masking and a lot of ways to mask. So there we go. We're kind of building up this texture. Let's see. You can also drag selections, right? I can't. I can't paint on a solid color layer. I can paint on an empty layer. Oh, if we go in here, select that empty layer. I can paint on an empty layer. You can also paint on a mask. Uh, I'm sorry, paint on a mask with that selection. And so if I highlight my selection here, and fill Alt Backspace, and I Alt click that to preview, you can see how I can now leverage selections. I'm holding shift to do multiple selections. And then Alt Backspace to fill. There's the preview of that mask. And you can see how I'm starting to, you know, complicate this mask. I start to layer up the, you know, Maybe not layer, but uh, yeah, kind of layer up this mask. And let's go underneath here. I'm actually going to get rid of... And then go down to the yellow solid fill layer. Go to this mask. Oops. Go back to our brush. Be on our keyboard. And I'm going to remove out some of the yellow paint now. that so you can see how we're starting to mask away as they say mask away this information take away this paint and at any point I can go back and say well I did I wanted that you know I kind of kind of did want that there and so you can paint it back in this is a non-destructive editing non-destructive painting now uh, another way to mask is to well not mask it's called quick mask but it's really a selection thing so if we hit Q on our keyboard you see this button down here is activated and our layer turned red we're in quick mask mode and it's like an invisible wall here that I can paint on you can see it says I'm painting with black but what JJ why is it coming out red I don't understand why is it red because it's quick mask and now when I leave Quick Mask and I hit Q, it's going to give me a selection of what I just painted. This is a really, really powerful thing, and it works a lot like masking. So if I hit Q, back into Quick Mask, and I paint here, I'm painting with black and white, so it works the same way. I can paint it in, and I can flip my color with X, and I can paint it up, you know, paint it out. We're talking about selections here, painting out the selection. So I hit Q. There's my selection. That's Q to leave. You can enter and leave. Enter and leave with Q. And I can actually go into Quick Mask. I hit Q and I can Control I to invert the colors, just like you could on a regular mask. And then when I leave Quick Mask, it's the inverse of my selection. Or if I just want to invert my selection, Control Shift I. go back into my mask and now I'm going to use this selection as a shield if you will and I'm going to paint away so you see I'm almost let's change my brush size so, yeah so I can use a quick mask as a selection to kind of shield off areas like this Control D to deselect. Now 
Another thing that's kind of fun with Quick Mask is that I can actually paste into Quick Mask. And so if I wanted a selection of what I'm seeing here, I could Control A, select all the pixels on the canvas, Control Shift C to copy what I see, and I'm gonna hit Q to go into Quick Mask. I know I'm dropping lots of hotkeys on here. We're in Quick Mask. And I'm gonna paste with Control V. And then I'm gonna hit Q again to leave Quick Mask. And now I actually have a selection of my picture. Kinda cool. Now why I might want to do that, we're going to go over here, layers, uh, adjustment layers, and I'm going to say pattern. We're going to do a pattern fill. And I just made a selection as a map, you know, and when I, yeah, let me start over. I just made a selection that when I run a new adjustment layer on the stack, it's going to auto create that adjustment layer with my mask. And so I can change my grunges here. Maybe that one. I hit OK. And then let's preview that mask. And I'm going to actually level the mask. Or you could do brightness contrast. Control B, it is for me. I'm say use legacy. And I'm going to push that mask around with brightness contrast. And if we uh, unpreview, we cancel out of that. On preview, but highlight that mask and Control L. Oh, sorry. Control B. Let's do brightness contrast. Contrast. You see, I can push that mask around. And this is where Photoshop starts to get really powerful. So when you start layering masks up like this, so I'm gonna crunch that mask, and maybe I wanna adjust that brightness a little bit. Oh, work on this paint effect and say okay. And we just laid in an extra level of detail into our paint. So maybe that's not the right pattern. We can double click on that layer, go in here. Maybe, yeah, something like that. And then we maybe we can change the blending mode here. We haven't talked about blending modes yet. It's part kind of part of the layer talk. But this is where we can kind of set in. This is all math. And so uh, if you understand that color in digital space is numbers, then it's actually adding. There's a it's multiplying, it's adding, it's subtracting. You'll see a lot of math words in here. Uh, and that's how it's treating these pixels. And so there are different ways to, uh, white is a, is a value of one, and black is a value of zero. So if I have a bunch of white pixels on this grunge, you know, which I do, we look at this, right? I have white pixels in here. There's also black pixels in there. Uh, so if I multiply, it's gonna take those black pixels, which is, you know, under a value of one, and it's becoming less because if you, anytime you multiply with something less than one, it's just going to get smaller, right? We're taking away from it. So it's going to, in our case with pixels, it's going to get darker every time. So multiply is generally how do you make it darker, which is why all these are kind of grouped together, darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn. So if you have colors in here, I'm going to do like a color burn. You see how it's turning red on me. Let's double click to change the scale of that pattern. Let's say OK. So blending modes, yeah. Something else I'd like to talk about here since we've now masked away some of this. 
uh, is layer styles. Uh, layer styles, maybe best we start on an empty layer first. I'm gonna fill this real quick. And create another empty layer above that. So I'm on a, I have just this white layer here just so we can see what we're doing. <laughs> it's like a divider in our workspace. And then I have an empty layer, brand new empty layer, not a solid, not an adjustment layer, an empty brand new layer. And we're gonna go put some information on this empty layer. And maybe we want our electric brush. Yeah. Oh, real small. paint something on that layer and then we're gonna put some layer effects on here so down here at the bottom of our layer panel we got effects I'm gonna run this Let's put a stroke Let's zoom in here Let's set to inside maybe that, oh there it is I was like where is it Okay, our stroke. We'll put a couple other different kinds of brushes in here because this one's a little bit faded. So we'll put like a black stroke here. I'm gonna put a white stroke or a line paint. There we go. And then as we put layer styles on here. Maybe I change the stroke color to red. There we go. And we put it on outside. Change the opacity on it. Change the size of it. And this is where you can start getting into maybe making different effects. So, something like a red, brown. You can add a noise into it. I believe do like a dissolve which didn't seem to do anything <laughs> ah, there we go change the opacity there's also drop shadows in here what? there's totally not drop shadow in here there it is. Oh, you have to hit the little, uh, it's like there's a plus command. That's interesting. It's kind of new. Okay, there it is. Usually they show them all in here. Maybe it has something to do with the new, if I double click a layer. Interesting. Okay. So they used to show them all in here and you just turn them on. Now they keep them under here hidden effects drop shadow so we'll put a drop shadow on this stuff change the angle of that shadow size distance you can do an outer glow you can do it by gradient 2 I'm just gonna do it by a single color I'm gonna make this glow with outer glow. There we go. Make it more lasery. Okay, something like that. And uh, kind of what I'm getting at here is that we can create some effects on these masks. So using the mask I've painted here, go in here and say, drop shadow, sorry, wrong menu. Select that layer, we'll do a drop shadow. Just that 
distance and make it a little bit sharper. Pull that opacity. Maybe we want to change the color of the shadow. Could also do, uh, let's do an inner stroke maybe. Let's do a bevel emboss. There we go. Bevel emboss kind of puts highlights around shapes. So we turn up screen. You see it starts to almost look, you gotta be careful with this because it'll make everything look like plastic wrap. But, chisel soft. You can get some cool chipped paint effects, and if you know if you choose the right colors, maybe you sample, and sample a color, and then adjust it so that it's not a, a white highlight; it's more like a colored highlight. Yeah, something like that. Turn that up. And then the same thing with the shadow. Sample that color. And then maybe we go darker with it. It's okay. Now we have a sort of chipped paint effect, right? So maybe now we want to maybe we want to put an inner glow on this. Okay, it looked like it went the wrong direction. Let's do an outer glow. That's where I want it. And I'm going to change this to something rusted. Yeah. Like that. Turn that brightness down a little bit. Say okay. Add some noise to. To that, and turn the opacity down a little bit. It's coming on a little too saturated, a little too strong. I'm gonna let some of that metal show through. Say so, okay, and maybe we want to turn our yellow paint back on. No, nope, look better without. <laughs> and so layer styles with masking can now become really powerful. like that. Go in here and sign your name. <laughs> uh, yeah. I hit R on my keyboard to rotate. Let's say JJ was here. And because this is all non-destructive, solid color, I can actually change my paint. Change my paint color. <laughs> that was interesting. It's going a little bit slower now that we have all these effects on here. Right? We can also turn off the effects if we don't like them. Make my eyes trip out a little bit. There we go. Since this is metal underneath, maybe we want to drop a pattern in here. Make that look a little bit more detailed. Uh, something scratchy. There we go. I'm gonna set that to screen. 
I'm gonna drop that opacity down. Maybe like thirty mm, percent, something like that. Now another thing I'd like to talk about, and we'll do this on since we're kind of it's, it's starting to roll into this. You kind of know layers now. You know a little bit of masking. Uh, let's talk about blend ifs. And so I'm gonna drop another grunge in here. A little pattern fill. Blend ifs, uh, but we need a grunge first. So let me a grunge like that. Yep, that's good. I like that. And blend ifs. Uh, you will find if you double click a layer and we got this little thing under here that basically will it's kind of like a non-destructive mask or a procedural mask if you will and so as I pull up on this slider the this layer slider it starts to tear away those values and the closer I get to white, the more and more of it goes away. We'll go back the other way. I pull down on that white slider, it'll go the opposite direction. We'll start tearing away our white pixels. Now the gray pixels. Now we only have black pixels left. Something like that. And then we can set a blending mode on that. Let me turn it down. Actually, we're going to leave it on full full blast here. Um, let me show you something else you can do. Because we've already masked out the layer underneath it, uh, I just want to put this grunge on the red paint. So what I can do is hold Alt, and if I hover between these two layers, the grunge and my solid color you'll get, you'll see I get this little box right here and this is called a clipping mask so if I clip to what's underneath it now that pattern only shows up and you see it, it indented my layer now that pattern only shows up inside of my my paint layer and so if I mask away my paint layer on the paint layer mask you see it goes with it fancy Oops, undid just a few too many times back in here and level. See now I'm just kind of, I can't help. This stuff starts looking so cool. It starts to get so fun. I can't help but go in here and want to try things. Now I think I just want to dive a little bit deeper here into patterns and since I showed you how to create a brush, let's show you how to create a pattern. So I'm going to just hide my fire hydrant layer. Except I kind of want... Nah, no I don't. Let's create a new solid fill. I'm going to create a solid color. Make the background black. And I'm going to group this. Control G. i just group that. I'm going to call this base. Uh, I just double clicked on that to rename it. And I'm going to create an empty layer above. Well, maybe we'll do another solid as well. So let's do a solid color. I'm going to make it white. And I'm going to highlight that mask. And I'm going to hit Control i to invert that mask. To make it all black. Make that mask all black. And make that white go away. It's confusing. <laughs> let's uninvert that. So let's make it another paint color. Yeah. So if I hit control I on the mask, the red goes away. I just inverted that whole mask. So now all that red paint went away. Invert it again, it's back. Solid white mask, it's here again. 
And so I'm actually going to change it back to a white color just because we're making a pattern here, uh, a grunge pattern. And I'm going to go get our brush that we made. Make sure we're on that paint. Make sure that mask is actually highlighted. We'll go down to our brush. I'm going to do some painting on here to reveal some information. And I'm just going to create this wild looking texture here. We'll kind of go through. Now it doesn't matter what you use here to paint this. This is just going to become our grunge. Like that. And uh, we want to make this grunge tileable, right? So if we're going to make this into a pattern and this is going to repeat, we got to make sure that there are no seams and that it doesn't look um, gross gross when we repeat it over and over. So with that mask selected, I could do this on a regular layer too, but I'm going to do it on the mask. I'm going to go filter, other, offset, and I can drag these sliders and you see there's my seam. And basically this is offsetting our texture, offsetting our canvas. And so we can see the, we can now see the edges of our canvas in the middle. Now we want to check by Alt Control, Alt I. We're on a 2048 document. And I just want to do this, cut it in half. So I'm going to go filter, other, offset. Let's say 1024 by 1024. And now it's offset perfectly down the middle. And I'm going to hit enter. And now I can paint that seam out, right? Just like that. Maybe I go back over it with some white, kind of blend it in here. And now that seam is pretty much gone. Now I think by painting on these edges again, I created more seams. So we're going to re-offset filter and you can do that last offset control F to run last filter if I control F it's going to offset it again at 1024 All right, make sure we don't have any seams and it looks good right so we just created a new grunge pattern and you know maybe I'm not happy with that grunge pattern we we'll name this folder grunge group grunge group and so above this white layer I'm going to add another one we're going to say solid color. I'm going to make this white too. I'm going to invert the mask on it. So i got to highlight the mask and control I. And then we're going to change our brush here. And I'm thinking I want to do some scratches now. Maybe something like that. Go in here and kind of mess this up a little bit. Flip my color. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Take some of it away. I'm going to add another solid color. And I'm going to change this solid color to black. And I'm going to clear that mask, so I'm going to go into it. You could right click, delete layer mask. So there's our white scratches underneath. And I'm just going to create a new mask. So I'm going to hit this new mask button down at the bottom. New mask. And then I'm going to invert that mask to make it go away. And now I'm going to paint in black scratches. And since our last filter that we ran was still offset, I'm going to actually offset these masks 
Yeah, it looks like we have some kind of obvious seams in there. But I'm not going to worry about it too much because this is just a demo. And now that we have a new grunge, I'm going to minimize that grunge group. What I like to do is duplicate it. So I just alt drag that whole group up, duplicated it. And then on that folder, I'm going to hit Control E to merge the folder into one group, or I'm sorry, into one layer. And now we have a flat version of that group. And what I'm going to do with that flat version is I'm going to go up to Edit, and we're going to Define Pattern. Boom, define Pattern. And I'm just going to leave that as the name of the pattern. It's going to be our Photoshop Crash Course 2 pattern. And I'm going to say OK. Now, I'm going to go, I'm going to turn all that off, go back down to my fire hydrant. And if I go add another pattern fill, let's do pattern fill. Scroll down to the bottom of our patterns. So I have that new pattern in here. And what's great about this is I can tile it now. I can change that scale. So we go down to 25%. You see how it whoosh. So now we kind of have an infinitely tileable pattern. So I just changed it to 50%. So basically I now have four of those same patterns here. There's one on each corner. And I'm going to put that pattern into the fire hydrant folder. Underneath the paint. Maybe I can change the blending mode on that. And then turn the opacity down. Those scratches are a bit loud, so I'm going to turn those down too. You see how we're starting to layer things up. Now what else is cool is that I can actually take this pattern I'm going to duplicate it, so I just alt dragged it to the top, I duplicated it. I'm going to hide my fire hydrant again so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to put a solid color in here just so that I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I like to put a divider almost in between projects here. And this pattern, we're going to turn it back up, turn off the blending mode. And I'm going to use Quick Mask. Remember Q on our keyboard, we're going to enter a quick mask, except before I go, I want to hold, I'm going to hit Control A, select the whole canvas, I'm going to do Control, Alt, or Control Shift C to copy, and then we can hide that, right, because we're done with it, I already copied it to the clipboard, and I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard, and so I'm in quick mask, we know that because our layer is highlighted red. And we have this quick mask button here on. Now if I paste into quick mask, there's that grunge we made, it's now in quick mask. And I'm gonna leave, and I got this wild selection. And I'm gonna use that wild selection to go down to our fire hydrant. And I'm gonna turn our fire hydrant layer back on so we can kinda see it all, or not see it all. And really to uh, my next point, if uh, you kind of want to see what it's doing, or you want to see what's underneath your selection, you hit Control H to hide it. it you didn't deselect it. Don't for, don't forget that your selection is here. It's still there. It's different from de it's different than deselecting. But we can hide it, and then we can go into our mask on our red paint, and I'm going to use that selection, which is still here. Control H. I'm going to use that selection to paint away some of this stuff and paint back in. 
let's see. Yeah, we'll just use a, uh, you know, we'll use our circle brush. But you can see how some of that's broken up, and it's based off of our pattern. Or our selection, I'm sorry. Control H, Control H. Now, really, it's not, um, it's not strong enough. And so what I think I want to do is I'm going to hit Q to go back into Quick Mask. And our, qu our Quick Mask is still here. And I'm going to do a Brightness Contrast on our Quick Mask. Let me say Use Legacy. And I'm going to make this Quick Mask really crispy. Say OK. And then I'm going to leave Quick Mask and we just changed our selection. So I'm going to control H to hide that selection. And now when I go and paint on our red paint fire hydrant mask, there we go. That's kind of what I was going for. Much crispier, right? I'm kind of not liking this uh, black uh, blend if grunge that we did earlier, so I think I'm just gonna. Where is it? Was it that one? This is why you should name your layers, everybody. Because I don't know where it's at. There it is. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it down. Look at us working non destructively. Yep, 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 yep. Don't forget, that selection is still here. I'm going to go back to my mask on my red paint. And so, you see how I have these circles, which looks kind of strange, which is partly why I changed my, uh, how intense that quick mask was. But now I want to use another brush to make it even more convincing. So maybe I, I don't know, let's use this one. This one's fun. There we go. And so you can see this, the shape of this brush. And by the way, since we're talking about the shapes of the brush, uh, if you hit caps lock on accident, <laughs> It will uh, hide your brush preview. Caps lock, turn it back on. Mm, maybe that's not the one I want. Let's do um, let's do this one. Yeah, it's leaving some residue behind. And so we are really getting kind of deep in here with all the effects that we have going. Because uh, not only do I have our new, our new grunge as a selection, but I'm using that selection with a brush that has its own unique shape. And then that is being run with layer styles and other grunges that, I mean, you can just see how, how deep this gets, right? how wild these effects can get and all of this is non-destructive so if at any point I didn't like my rust color or I didn't like my paint color I could go in here and start to edit some of that turn our opacity down and really kind of approach this a little softer. Oh no, JJ is no longer here. Control H, and then I think I'm just going to Control D to deselect. And maybe we want to do just kind of 
polish this off with some scratches or something. Something like that. Maybe adjust that blend diff. So if I double click on that pattern fill, pull up that blend diff. soften that blend if. I want some of those white pixels in there, that's why it's brightening up, um, but I don't want all of them. So I'm going to pull it down just a little bit until I get kind of where, you know, if we kind of focus on this area down here, you can see I still have some of those brighter pixels in there. Um, I'll pull my blend if to where it starts to kind of crunch away like that, and then I'll hold alt and I'll split my blend if to fade it a little better. And maybe I want to do that to the darker end so that all these uh, darker ones aren't in here. So I'll pull up on it a little bit until it starts to kind of chew away. Yep, just like that. Whoop. Yeah, right there. And then now I'll hold Alt and I'll pull it. And it'll start to fade away some of that. And then I'll say OK. All right, I think that's about as far as I want to take this video. That gave you guys a lot to work with. Uh, start building up your grunges, start building up your brushes, build your library. You see how that it, the more resources you have, I mean, this could get really crazy. I hope that helps. Thanks, guys.